Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, Go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. What's this all about? What's everybody running from? It's the end of everything. What do you mean? I'm not arguing theory, General. I'm here to ask you. To beg you to save your own world. It, 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 the most the fascinating most mastermind, mastermind man can conceive. Man a monster that can control all sources of the Earth's power. Able to pull man-made spaceships from their orbits. Making of those it chooses slaves. Of this woman, a willing handmaiden. Of the chief of police, a cold-blooded killer. Well, I've known you for five years. You just killed a man in cold blood. Why? I'll have to place you under protective custody. Peter Graves, the scientist who fought it. Beverly Garland, who believed her love stronger than it. Lee Van Cleef, whose brilliant mind was captured by it. Are you really ready to stop loving me? I'll need you even when no emotion exists. For a few dollars, you can, you can hire a woman who'll fit all your fetishes. You'll match your requirements perfectly. And if you ever get tired of it, you can always run down to the employment agency for another. You'll know terror to freeze your blood. You'll feel the heart-stopping strength of the most fearful monster ever known. You think you're going to make a slave of the world? I'll see you in hell first. It conquered the world. robot device has been rocketed from Earth to Mars with unimaginable results as Martians assume Earthmen identities. Is that what you plan on doing? Removing and replacing me? Well, as you see, Doctor, you've already been replaced. The day <laughs> Mars invaded Earth. What happened? Oh, Dave. Oh, honey, what happened? Somebody followed me. Starring Kent Taylor, space scientist, whose experiment backfired. Marie Windsor, the wife. Will she too be removed and replaced? What is it? It's unearthly. William Mims, marked for Martian vengeance. Terrifying, nightmarish, but too terribly, hair-raisingly real. Why have you brought them here? You can't harm me, Dr. Fielding. I don't believe you. You have the weapon. You may use it. No! No! Hot cornet can go, sounding hot and blue. 
but a hot cornet can. Like Betty Boop can do. A saxophone can go playing all night through, but a saxophone can't. Like Betty Boop can do. This little miss would never miss a chance for vocal tuning. And anytime and anywhere you can hear this lady crooning. An auto horn can go down the avenue, but an auto horn can't. Like Betty Boop can do. Made of pen and ink, she can win you with a wing. Ain't she cute? Sweet Betty. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Come on, folks. 
don't step up and get an eyeful right here. <laughs> And now, on with the show. gentlemen have known of each other. Doctor, it's rare to meet so illustrious a physicist as... Thank you, General. I'm pleased. But I'm sure you're just as distressed at my presence here as Secretary Platt. Oh, I wouldn't say distressed. No, certainly not, Mr. Platt. We're all in a state of high hilarity. And we'll all wind up in a state of high mortality if you don't call off a satellite project. How many times have I told you that's impossible? Not nearly as many times as I've warned the government against such a course. I said it when I was head of the Perpetual Missile Program. I said it before that when I was working on the Manhattan Project in War II. Don't tell me you haven't read my papers on the subject. You've had a remarkable career, Doctor. Every degree imaginable. Uh, by the way, uh, just what are you doing at present? Uh, retired, I understand? That's one way of putting it. The world is full of fat heads, Mr. Secretary. Full to overflowing. I've got a great deal of respect for you, Dr. Anderson. But this has not convinced me the satellite is a menace to the safety of the world. What happened to the first one, the small one? It exploded in its own orbit. Anyone know why? Nobody. I know why. It was a warning. I anticipated that fully three years before the satellite was launched. Uh, Doctor, you said something about the other planets wanting to keep the Earth in its place? To keep her out of the skies. 
But there's no life in the other planets of this system. I'm not arguing theory, General. I'm only telling you this. Alien intelligence watches us constantly. It will see this satellite of yours and know something must be done. I'm here to ask you, to beg you, to save your own world. Well, Doctor, this has become just an academic question. In about eight seconds, the sphere will be launched. They're in the countdown right now. Did you bake it yourself? Oh, sure. An old family recipe my grandmother sold at the bakery. Mm -hmm. Tom, you want some more? Only half a gallon. What are you acting so smug about? You look like a man who just inherited Texas. You might not be too far off in a sense. Tom? Yes, dear. I know. I bet you finally decided you were wrong about the satellite. Hardly. It's my greatest interest in life. Second greatest. Well... Been up there for three months now, and nothing horrible has happened. 80 feet in diameter, 1,070 miles high, and circling the Earth at 16,000 miles an hour. Oh, look. Can't you two talk about anything else? I'm getting tired of hearing about nothing but satellites, isotopes, conical graduations, and all the rest. Maybe you've got something in space medicine I could use for a headache, huh? Now, well, you have got something up your sleeve. What is it? I can't tell you, Paul. My wife won't let me. She thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> the whole world thinks you're crazy, maybe even me. Now, what's the big secret? Well? Tom, please. Honey, this is too big. But you promised. Paul will understand. Maybe nobody else on Earth, but Paul will understand. I'll try. Come into the other room. Don't take it so hard, Claire. See what you've got. Come on, I'll wash and you wipe. Oh, there's one by the kit. It'll be just a second. Well, I've got a second. There, do you have any idea what you're listening to? London Philharmonic? It's Venus. Uh huh? Venus. Why not? We've bounced signals off the moon's surface. There's no reason that Venus shouldn't radiate impulses. I don't mean the static. Can't you hear it, the other thing? What other thing? Listen to it, Paul. Listen to the voice. Hello. Paul Nelson here. Well, that's impossible. Yes, I'll be right down. Something wrong at the installation? It's gone. What's gone? The satellite. It took off on a direct tangent into space. It's vanished. You'd better get over there. Joan! What is it, Paul? Some trouble at the installation. We have to run. Good night, Claire. Good night. I know what you're thinking, Tom. I don't appreciate it. I always thought Tom was a little off, but tonight he went too far. Tom's a genius. Too much so, but I got more important things to worry about. Let's go. Any change, Sergeant? No, oh, sir. I think maybe the general ain't so happy tonight. Raise the gate on the audio. We might hear something. It's a full decibel now. The scientific achievement of the century has disappeared. We've got to find it.
this keeps up, I think we should get a turnstile. It's back. Maybe the instruments failed and maybe they didn't. Anyway, we're gonna find out. Sorry, Doctor. Well, it wasn't your fault, Ellen. Now, be sure you get the reports to Washington before morning. Yes, sir. Tell them we're bringing the satellite down for full examination. Yes, sir. Pete, can you handle recovery procedure all right by yourself? All I have to do is wait till she's at 43 North, push a couple buttons. The Secretary Clyde is gonna wanna know where she went and why. That means examination of every instrument on board. If anything else goes wrong, call me at home. Good night, Doctor. Good night. <laughs> I am your only friend. Nobody else even knows you exist. But they will. It'll be the greatest day in the history of mankind. Come to bed, Tom. He's here, darling. He drew the satellite to his world, to Venus. And now he's back, within an hour. He's inside that circling laboratory, just waiting to come down to us, to save us. Please come to bed. You'll feel better in the morning. I'm signing off now. Hurry up and contact after sunrise. <laughs> Don't let it get a hold of you, Tom. You, you've dreamed and imagined for such a long time. Don't let your imagination bring itself to life. This is no image, darling. It's what I've been predicting for years. And this is good instead of evil. That was my one uncertainty. Well, don't think about it now. You need some sleep. I'm going to stay by the set tonight. Whatever you say, Tom. You're positive you know what you're doing? Oh, I think we can manage without wrecking it too much. Well, what am I worried about? I'm not paying for it. They're ready, Mr. Secretary. All right. Nothing to do now but bring it down. I've got the car waiting downstairs. Proceed with the operation. Roger. 30 seconds. Position 42 north, 58 minutes. 59 minutes, 43 north. Locking and locked. Decelerating. Four gravities. Too slow. Six gravities. Should be past 28 by now. Something wrong? Well, I don't know, General. The thing acts like it doesn't want to come down. Begin descent. Dorsal rockets engaged. Abandoning orbit. It's not responding. What's happening? I don't know, General. It's, it's behaving very erratically. Well, then send it back up. Don't experiment with it. It's too late now, General. She's in pattern. Or supposed to be. What's going to happen next? I don't think I want to know. Get Washington again, Carol. Yes, sir. Communications. Yes, yes, I hear you. He's alive, darling. He survived the crash. Tom, you're a sick man. The whole world's sick, darling. It always has been. But that's all over now. At last, every dream of man can be realized. Stop it, Tom. Would you get Paul on the phone? I've got to tell him. I'm going into town. When I get back, I, I pray to God you'll be rational. Claire. What's that? Yes. According to a rough triangulation, I put you in the mountains about 10 miles south of here.
thought you filled it last night. I did. It's funny, it must be the battery or something. I'll have a look. Paul, my watch has stopped. We'll wind it up. What's come over this place? Everything's gone haywire. There's been a power failure someplace. I imagine we'll have it fixed in a few minutes. Phone's dead, General. It sure is quiet outside. And it's always quiet in these mountains. Not this quiet. What happened to the satellite? Oh, it's down, just a little ways south of here. The signals were full of static, but still coming through when the power failed. Gone. Nine million dollars and five years' work. No, I can't find anything. Well, we can't just sit here for... Paul! <laughs> They might want us as witnesses. What time is it? Well, I've still got three past three. The darn thing won't go. Power clock is stopped, too. Same time. I wonder why. Coincidence? No. I've got a premonition. Well, I've got a stalled car. For once, I'm glad Tom pulled out here in the country. We'll walk up to his place. Maybe he'll drive us to a garage. Might as well. You can't sit here all day. Yes. I have the names of the key control people in this vicinity. Mayor of Beechwood, Andrew Townsend. Chief of Police, N.J. Shallot. Chief Security Officer for the installation, Brigadier General James Paddock. Head of the Satellite Project, Dr. Paul Nelson. Along with their wives, this makes a total of eight. Exactly the number of control devices you will be able to produce at this time. I'd like to see one of these devices. I presume they're electronic in function. <laughs> What's happening in the rest of the country, Mr. Haskell? I don't know. The wire service broke down. Looks like this town is stranded in the midst of nowhere. Well, Mrs. Anderson, your husband said this thing was going to happen. Now ask him how well were we going to get out of it. Yes, I'll, I'll be sure to. Keep moving. Nothing to be afraid of. Officer, my husband, he's in an iron lung. It stopped. You get back in there and operate it by hand. I'll get help to you. Claire! You're Anderson. I read your stuff. You did this. Come on, you! Haven't I got trouble enough without somebody got a car? Are you hurt? No, come on, I got the car parked on the edge of town. Well, none of the other cars are working. Ours is at power control. I thought you said Tom and Claire live nearby. <laughs> they do when you're driving. What's that? Well, I'm not gonna stop to ask it. What an ugly creature. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, neither have I. Must be some kind of cave bat. Remind me to ask Tom about it. He knows zoology. Well, let's go. We'll never get there standing here. We stopped power at source. That means electricity, steam, water, combustion engines, everything. Water? You mean the faucets won't work? That's right. Oh, that's nonsense. Hey, cut that out. Thought you said it wouldn't work. Well, sure, that works. It belongs to me. Nice to see you. 
see you folks. Just get back from the Olympics? Oh, practically. Your car broke down about 100 miles up the road. You chose the wrong day to go for a ride. Can you run me down to Phil's garage? I'm afraid that wouldn't do you any good, but I will ask you inside for a drink. You look all in. A drink I can use. I get to Mike. What's your pleasure? Mm, I'll have some bourbon and soda. Somebody can just pour a bucket of water over my head and then shrink my feet. <laughs> what time did your car die? Three past three. Well, that's when all the clocks stopped. Mm-hmm. Do you need anything else? No, thank you, dear. Wait a minute, how did you know the car died? Could have had a broken axle or anything. Could have. It didn't. Ran down just like every other car did today. Misery loves company, but that's carrying it too far. What's going on? Relax. You have plenty of time. Heard anything from General Paddock? Not a thing. Not since he left the headquarters an hour ago. Took the jeep, huh? No, the jeep don't run, so the general, he walks. How are things going inside? Power's still off. Funny thing, the auxiliary is a hand crank. That doesn't even work. I wonder what effect all this is having on my wife's big mouth. Let me know if you hear anything from the gentleman. Yeah, sure thing. Anyone's believed me. All right, let's assume you're right. A superior intelligence has come from Venus in my satellite. Established residency turned off the world's power and is about to take over the world's population. Why aren't you fighting it? Because this superior intelligence happens to be a personal friend of mine. I believe he's here to rescue mankind, not to conquer it, as you have naturally concluded. A personal friend of yours? Real chums. The days when people made fun of me are over, girls. Rescue mankind from what? From itself. Oh, I didn't know we needed rescuing. Remember your theory on contained gravitation? How could I forget it? You thought you could build a craft that would degravitate itself and so escape the Earth's draw without any fuel or engine of any kind. Mm -hmm. Good idea. What happened to it? Washington red tape couldn't get an appropriation. So? Stupidity. An example of how stupidity restrains man's progress. I've been a continual victim of it myself. Stupidity, fear, greed. And the new arrival is going to end all of this? In so short a time, you hardly realize it's been done. I can't help feeling a sense of triumph, Paul. I'm in on the beginning of ultimate freedom. I predicted the possibility. I assist the benefactor. How's he going to do it? Can't tell you yet, Paul. It's premature but you'll be with us very soon. I don't think so, Tom. I'd have to take a long, hard look at anything that was going to change the world and me so completely. How about a lift to the lab? No point in going there. It's inoperative and useless. Then will you drive us home? Sure. Go out to the car. I'll be with you in a minute. Paul didn't panic. There's nothing quite like a logical, orderly mind. He didn't panic because logic makes him think you're insane. Don't ride me, Claire. I've forgiven your lack of faith for years. But now the facts are in front of you. It's time you stood by me. I'll stand by you, Tom. Not just because I'm your wife, but because I love you. You heard? Trace the energy of my car. It will lead you to Nelson's home. He's difficult, but his mind is of utmost value. Ever 
Everything in order, men? Yes, sir. Big news from headquarters. This whole area has been placed under martial law. Golly. They seem to think I should be in command of this sector and prepare defense measures. Against what? They didn't say. This place is to be abandoned. Neil, I want you, Manuel, and the rest of the installation guards to move out at 1630 hours. You're going on a forced march. Yes, sir. Your reconnaissance. Take a position south of Baker's Ridge and observe the country to the east. But take no action. Hey, Senor General. Yes, sir. How are we going to know when it's 430? Nobody's watch is working. Here, take mine. It's running again. Now assemble your gear and move out. What good is that going to do? There's still no power. I know it. Let's just say it keeps me off the street. Hmm? Oh, General Paddock's any news? Big news. We're in the midst of a communist uprising. They've sabotaged every power source in the area. What? How'd they manage to hit all power at once? I can understand them getting the big electric and water plants, but none of the independent generators here are working. And wristwatches. And the flashlight. Well, don't ask me. I just know they did it. Well, how did you get the message? Radio and wires are dead as everything else. A special courier got through from Fifth Army Command. I have orders to restrict everyone to this building until the emergency is over. You mean we're prisoners? Well, protective custody, so to speak. They'd like to get their hands on people with your fund of secrets. Well, there's blankets and canned goods in the broom closet. We'll make out. I'll have some supplies set over, but don't budge an inch. We you read you, General? Not an inch. Well, guess we've got a lease. Drop over real soon. We'll be sure to, Joan. I hope you haven't made a permanent enemy of Paul. You were really rough on him tonight. It's no longer possible for me to make an enemy, darling. The word enemy is about to disappear from the human language. Oh, what about the word tact? Well, at least you get a day off. We'll see about that. Dad? Yes, try the light switch. Paul, do you think he could be right? He couldn't be. He said he predicted it. In the 15 years I've known Tom Anderson, he's predicted everything a fertile imagination could. He's wasted his entire life on calculated fantasy. One or two of his dreams were bound to come true, if only because they're so all-encompassing. Maybe this dream has come true. No, a natural catastrophe has occurred, Joan. We'll find a reason for it. Tom is merely trying to attach one of his pet ideas to it. Don't you see, it vindicates him, proves to a laughing world that all of his whimsies are accurate. I see. A chance to regain face. Exactly. The cave you were in is located over a hot spring. That is why you find it cohabitable with Venus. Paul Nelson's still at large. If he's not at his home, he may try to get to the satellite installation. It will take you 12 days to produce eight new devices. Too bad there aren't more of you. What are my next instructions? Remain here until Beechwood is evacuated. Yes, sir. Come on, come on, keep going. Out into the street. The evacuation must be accomplished by midnight. Stay up here. Faster, faster, move fast. What's this all about? What's everybody running from? <laughs> it's the end of everything. What do you mean? Highway 18, let me go. Oh, that's into the desert. They set up a camp for us. Let loose of me. They're after us. Who's after you? Baker's Ridge. We'll turn off here and watch cross country to the south. Hey, why don't you watch where you're going? I seen a funny looking bird. Uh, that was no bird, that was the guy in front of you. All right, let's move. Oh, they're 
we're running from something. Maybe we should get up, too. No, no, I have an idea. That's the plan. Clear the town. Control panic. Control? But Tom said it was... Forget what Tom said. I've got to go up to the installation. Oh, Paul, no. I've got to, Joan. I can't stay here and watch the whole world fall apart. Now you get inside and lock everything up. Oh, darling, I'm afraid something terrible will happen to you. Please don't. Now go on. And be sure you close the windows, every one of them. I'll be back as soon as I can. Paul! You're about the last man still in town, Mr. Haskell. Well, looks like it. I'll probably be here for the rest of my day. Please don't be difficult, Editor. Well, you got a gun, Charlotte. That isn't like you. But gun or no gun, here I stay. I helped build this town. My paper got you your job for you, remember? No need for papers now. They're nothing but a stack of ideas and notions. Useless. Get moving. Sorry, but I'm staying. Charlie. Oh, Dr. Nelson. I've been hoping I'd see you. Explain. What is this? Orders, Doctor. Whose orders? His. Charlotte, I've known you for five years. You just killed a man in cold blood. Why? His orders. I'll have to place you under protective custody. Ooh. You're to be one of us. Get up. You're free. What are you doing now? I finally learned from my friend the structure of the control devices. They fly to the persons wanted like birds. I just see one. How do they, uh, how do they gain control of the victim? Well, there are no victims, darling. You should rather call them the released. According to him, they have radiological electrode type things in their beaks. They plant these in the person's neck, after which he is controlled by the benefactor. And like bees, once they have stung, so to speak, they die. And the people, they don't die. No. No. Now only their minds. Their minds are clearer than they ever thought possible. Only the waste is gone. The hate, the bitterness, dreams, all the foolish nonsense. The emotion? Yes, the emotion. Why are you holding me? Why? waste. What? It's an emotion. Tom, you... You can't rub the tarnish from men's souls without... without losing a little bit of the silver, too. It has to be that way. Oh, Tom, are you really ready to stop loving me? I'll try to think clearly, darling. Why do people love her? Because they see in another the answer to their needs. I see warmth in you and beauty. You're everything I must have as a man. And I'll need you even when no emotion exists. Don't try and split canes with your wife, darling. For a few dollars, you can, you can hire a woman who'll fit all your fetishes. She'll match your requirements perfectly. And then if you ever get tired of her, you can always run down to the employment agency for another. Don't you believe in signs, Dr. Nelson? General Paddock, you startled me. Didn't mean to. Well, why is the place shut down? Where is everybody? They've been transported to the district air base. No telling what might happen to them here. Hmm. May I give you a ride back to Beechwood? It's a long bike trip. You certainly may, General. You certainly may. Let's get this in there. Oh! 
Oh, what a relief. That seat is built for the spanking size, and I'm a little bit beyond it. Hey, how come this thing runs? New experimental model. You just wind it with a rubber band and hold it with your thumb. You know, I think it would be best if you and Mrs. Nelson would join your employees at the base. Could be. Is there any way I can get in touch with them? Not a chance. They're under protective custody. General, don't you think we ought to get that rock out of the road before we start? Huh? What rock? Another drink or another ride? You filthy murderer. Well, that's a nice way to greet an old friend. Did you tell me that you were a friend of this alien? Did you tell me you helped it? Sit down, Paul. You're upset. I'll sit down and then you'll talk. I want to hear everything. Now you're being reasonable. Yes, I helped him. I paved the way. I told him everything that would make it possible for him to come here. There's only one? There's only one on Earth. There are nine altogether. The other eight are still on Venus. They're the sole survivors of a race that was born too soon. It developed amid the eruptions and the boiling gases of Venus. A planet that won't catch up to Earth in perhaps a million years in climate. A dying race. Yes, but each of the nine has an intellect that will dwarf humans. Make us look like so many roaches by comparison. And you think we need him? We always have. Listen, do you know that in the last 24 hours, men have had their minds, their personalities, their moral standards imprisoned? That a whole population has been herded like cattle into the desert? That men have been murdered for failing to obey the new master? It makes you think a little, doesn't it? Yes. Makes me look back into history for a comparison. Comparison or rationalization? Listen, Paul. Throughout man's career, every great change, every sudden leap in his station has resulted in torment, chaos, and death. The French Revolution brought democracy to Europe. Plagues brought wondrous cures. Wars brought about fast planes, atomic power, radiological medicine, our own discoveries. No, no, that won't hold. You're talking about human change, something you want to get rid of. Well, this thing isn't human, so your argument falls flat. And incidentally, I could point out an equal number of regressions and disasters that have been brought about by revolutions and plagues and wars. I'm not convinced. Well, neither am I of your hypotheses. Well, you will be. You must be. He wants you on his side. Next to me, he wants you. And you want me to condone this reign of terror? To swear allegiance to this monstrous king of yours, to kill my own soul and all within reach? Well, I won't, Anderson. I'll fight it to the last breath in my body. And I'll fight you, too, because you're part of it, the worst part. Because you belong to a living race, not a dying one. This is your land, your world. Your hands are human, but your mind is enemy. You're a traitor, Anderson. The greatest traitor of all time. And you know why? Because you're not betraying part of mankind, you're betraying all of it. and disagreements, he was my best friend. Is that all you can think of as losing a friend? Didn't his words mean anything to you? If you weren't so blind, you'd realize that Paul was your friend today as he's never been before. What do you mean? Oh, you fool. 
Anybody who didn't care about you, who didn't believe there was still something in you worth trying to save would have killed you on the spot. Killed me? Yes. Just as he'll find a way to kill your God. He had a gun. I saw it in his coat. A gun? That's right, Tom. You just had an undeserved stay of execution. So you believe with him that I'm a traitor? You've turned against me all the way. I've done nothing. Everything is up to you. You're the one who has to see for himself. I don't know. I guess I'm just a fool. I'm like Paul. I can't help believing that you're going to find yourself. I love you, darling, but, but I have pride. I want to love a good man, the fine man I married. I won't love a monster. I won't. Don't cry, Claire. Believe me, I know what I'm doing. Oh, Tom, stop it! I hear you. Yes, each would seem secure. Sir, I'm troubled. Maybe you haven't got that word in your sphere, but I must see you. Why not? Yes, I'll be patient, but Paul Nelson is still at large. That means that he, his wife Joan, Mayor Townsend, and his wife are the four not yet under control. killed George Haskell. And I went to the lab and it was closed. I found General Paddock possessed. It's a horrible mess. I'll tell you about it when you come out. Yes, sir. Honey? Mm-hmm. How come the shower's working? <laughs> it's not. But after a while, I felt so tacky, I just had to do something. So I stuck a bucket full of water in the shower window and used the shampoo hose. Sheer genius. Hey, come out here. I want to see you. Since what had you come in here? Since I'm too tired to move. All righty. I'll come out to you then. Oh, there's a draft on your neck. I don't want you to catch cold. The window. I told you to keep it closed. Well, it got stuffy in here. I had to have some air. Guess what I've got? present for you. Good night, darling. I'm going for a short walk. When I get back, you'll feel much better. phone left. What do you want? I just talked to my friend. He said you killed the control device that was made for you. So? So that means you can't be controlled for over a week. Come on over. I want to talk to you. I want to apologize. How will I get there? Jones station wagon will run. All right, I'll come over. There's something I have to take care of first. Good. I'll see you later. Thank you. 
He's coming. Yes. Yes, it must be done. What is it? He said Paul is first of the minds to be taken. First because he is the most dangerous. He's the one enemy. The one great enemy because he knows basically what he's fighting. His control device is gone. What does that mean? It means he must die. He's too great a menace to live the weak. I'm supposed to kill him tonight. I knew it wouldn't take long. You were right. And now we must wait for him to give us instructions. What sort of instructions? Or to conquer the world. We'll be this way from now on, won't we? For the rest of our lives. I see. up and wait. We come all the way out here in the woods, so what do we do? We're supposed to be observing suspicious actions, remember? What kind of actions? You tell me. I told you, but you don't listen to me. What are you talking about? I told you I seen that funny-looking bird. Bird, bird. Will you forget about the bird already? That's what you've been talking about all day. All right, you guys, what is this, a picnic? You men with the dice, clean your rifles. Never mind the beefs, get busy. Is that what you plan to use on Paul? You'd murder your best friend? Tom, if you do that, you'll be killing me with the same bullet. What's the matter? Has the cat got your tongue so you can't talk? Maybe your friend has it. You've given him everything else of you. Tom. Tom, are you afraid to talk to me? Are you just plain ashamed? Well, that must be it. Are you closing off your machine? Suppose your boss wants you to run down to town and cut out a few hearts. He might get mad when he can't reach you and snap his fingers. Has he got fingers? The master isn't going to like it when the servant turns off the juice. He might want to turn you into a white rat so that That's you can... That's enough, Claire. He speaks. The zombie speaks. That's right. Let's have some music. Must be great to have the only working phonograph in the world. A gift from His Majesty. It makes you feel like a big man, doesn't it? Just like you've always wanted to be. Claire. Yes? What I have to do tonight is difficult enough. You're only making it harder on me. I want it to be hard. Oh, please, please, darling. Open your mind for just a few minutes and let me get inside so I can talk to you. Tell me about this invader. Now, what's he like? Well, I don't know much. He's strong or he wouldn't have been able to make the trip through space. He's advanced because he can talk to his controlled subjects at a distance. Of course, he's super intelligent. He's established at Elephant Hot Springs Cave because he needs a climate like that of Venus. Hiding in a cave? Afraid of light? 
Love and Earth must have no use to him except as a subject of conquest. I said I'd listen and answer your questions. We'll argue about it later. Why does he want you to kill Paul? Because he was able to manufacture only eight control devices for the four key control people in the vicinity and their wives. Wives? Yes. There was a pair for Paul and Joan. Paul killed his, which means we must do something about it. Joan's been controlled? Yes. There are only three on the list that were not. Paul, the mayor, and his wife. But they're dead. They were killed in the crush of the evacuation. We know. Well, then why doesn't the king use their devices on Paul? He would, but it's too late. They've already been used. On whom? I can't tell you. Sleep long? No. What time is it? Going on dawn. How, how did it happen? Don't ask us. It all just started up again. We're checking to see if anything's out of order. Well, wonders never cease. Any coffee? No. How about making us some? Okay. Never mind, Ellen. I'm not thirsty. Well, I am, if you don't mind. You shouldn't have looked in there. What's the matter with you? I'll relax, Ellen. It won't take more than a minute. <laughs> At this point, physical contact with Venus shall be established with a center. <laughs> Paul Nelson shall direct the operation. My acquisition of his encephalographic control. I shall remain in contact. It's finally coming. What are you going to do? I should take a walk, Claire. You'll be safe. After everything I've said, you're still going through with it? I must. My beliefs haven't changed. I still have to have the courage of my convictions. Tom, I proved to you that your friend is as weak as you are. He's hiding in a cave, pleading with a human to do his rotten work. He's dead afraid of strength, and that means Paul Nelson. He can't even wait a week to control Paul. That's how frightened he is. I'm sorry, Claire. I have to go out and meet him. Look, I don't know whether you can hear me or not, but if you can, you listen good. I hate your living guts for what you've done to my husband and my world. I know you for the coward you are, and I'm going to kill you. Do you hear that? I'm going to kill you. Took you long enough to get here. Yeah, long enough. We talk here or inside? Inside. How's Joan? She's dead. What? How? I killed her. You killed your wife? Not my wife. She wasn't my wife. She was a product of your work. A member of the society of the new world. You shouldn't have. I had to. But she was still your wife. Still Joan. You would have been one with her if you hadn't... If I hadn't destroyed the thing that was trying to control me? Yes. But why shouldn't I destroy it? It was my enemy. You don't seem to realize that we're at war. You made Joan my enemy. My enemy forever, and I had to kill her. My own wife. And now I'm going to kill you. Go ahead. What good will do you? Plenty of good. If I can get to the leaders, to you, to Paddock, to Shallot, the battle will be half won, because apparently this god of yours is immobile. Has to have human beings to carry out his battle orders. Well, I can find people, plenty of them, and we can defeat this thing you call a benefactor. 
Perhaps you can. So many things have happened. Joan. You could help us. You're the only one who knows anything about the invader. Why don't you kill me and get it over with? No, no. No, I'm going to get what I can out of you first. I hear it, Gar. First one I hear all day. Remarkable. I got worse things to worry about. Like where we're going to get some rations. You mean we got nothing to eat? Not a thing. I got no way to requisition any chow out here. Man, I'm hungry. I'm hungry, too. How about I go rustle some cows? No, don't be stupid. Who's stupid? You're stupid. Who's got any cows out here? All right, I'll go rustle some chickens. this ruler of yours, Tom. You better talk. I'm not afraid to use this. I don't suppose you are. Well, at least you're not a coward. There's that much of the human being left in you. Don't waste flattery on me, Paul. It won't work. And I'm not flattering you. I'm telling you the truth. Do you think for a minute that one of your control people would resist? Oh, not a chance. Courage is an emotion. No, he'd logically conclude that the only way to stay alive would be to talk. You see, pure logic works only for the individual. There's no group feeling, no patriotism, no cooperation of any kind. What? You heard me, Tom. The king's playing you for a big sucker. He's using your human emotions, your loyalty, your desire to help your race, your dreams of freedom, everything else you preach to get his own ends. He doesn't feel these things. Somebody else has to do it for him. has never occurred to me. Well, of course it hasn't. We've been too busy waving a non-existent flag. Look, this thing doesn't have any emotions, therefore it can't understand them. But it does know they exist. And in order to defeat them, it has to use them against things that do have them. Found you, I better buttered you up plenty. You've praised my work. To keep you working, of course. How could he care anything about you? He doesn't like, he doesn't dislike. He merely reasons, concludes, and uses. You have what might be a plausible theory. That is, that an emotionless being is helpless when surrounded by beings with emotion because they'll defend one another, stand together, as you want Claire to stand with you. But it's no theory, Tom, it's the truth. Have I reached you? Maybe. Some, I don't know. Am I still gonna have to kill you? I was supposed to kill you. His orders. Suppose he asks you to try again later, assuming I don't finish you right now. I don't think I could do it. I'd have to have time to think. I don't know whether to give you a chance or not. I've got a rifle over here, but I'm not going to use it. Let's go on! Now it's reached you. 
right down into your heart. Are you going to fight it? Are you going to help me destroy it? I'll get you the installation. Pete, Roy Mason is possessed. Take care of them, I'll go to the Cape. Elephant Hot Springs. You haven't got a gun. I'll find something. installation strip. I have been told. He has ordered me to fly to Washington. The president will die first. Then the cabin. Way back in there. It's too big for this little squad, I think. Bazooka man, set up here and cover the entrance. The rest of you drop packs and fix bayonets. We're going in.
He said you're on a battlefield. I know that better than you do, Sergeant. How well are you doing? Half my men are dead. Nothing can stop that thing. Call off your troops. Are you nuts? I say call them off. Cease firing! I made it possible for you to come here. I made you welcome to this earth. You made it the charnel house! like he knew it. He did. He and no one else. He learned almost too late that man is a feeling creature. And because of it, the greatest in the universe. And he learned too late for himself that men have to find their own way to make their own mistakes. There can't be any gift of perfection from outside ourselves. When men seek such perfection, they find only death, fire, loss, disillusionment, and the end of everything that's gone forward. Men have always sought an end of toil and misery. And it can't be given, it has to be achieved. There is hope, but it has to come from inside man himself. choice of food and drink to satisfy anyone and everyone. You'll find something to please you to add to your evening's enjoyment. Something to please all tastes and age groups. starts in six minutes. Time now for your barbecue break. Treat yourself right now to that good old southern style just right barbecue. Steeped in taste tingling barbecue sauce made just right from fresh firm choice ingredients. The recipe handed down for generations and cooked southern style to tender perfection. Slowly hour after hour capturing the taste tempting barbecue flavor. It's just right tender goodness, generously spooned on a fresh, soft bun for you. Mmm, it's hard to wait. It smells so good. And oh boy, it is lip-smacking good. Here it comes, your southern-style just right barbecue on a bun with all the delicious trimmings. A snack to remember. Enjoy it now along with your choice of hot or cold drinks. It's a favorite of all the family. Prepared and served just right. The only thing better than this barbecue sandwich is the next one. Just try the best barbecue in the land that made barbecue famous. It's southern style, just right barbecue. Show starts in five minutes. Flips, the new snack sensation. Flips, the crispy, crunchy chip with a zesty, tantalizing flavor all its own and an airy lightness that's so satisfying, but not filling. 
We make them fresh right here. So you can treat yourself to a cup or a bag full of America's newest chip-type snack while you're watching the show. Flips. Deliciously different. Show starts in four minutes. Toddy, the chocolate malt in a can. It's so good hot. It's so good cold. It hits the spot with young and old. Yes, Toddy pleases everybody. Delicious chocolate malted Toddy, made with rich, real milk, not powdered milk. So come and get it, everybody. It's time to drink your chocolate Toddy. Mmm, delicious. Show starts in three minutes. They're at the movies, it's a big date. They love their popcorn, look what they ate. This kind of action, the main attraction, oh boy, ain't love grand. He's buying lots of goodies, ice cream, Pepsi, and peanuts too. Living on love's not easy, you need your strength to woo. Now he returns, what does she yearn? Refreshing Pepsi, a kiss he earns. Romance and pleasure, and for good measure, thirst quenching Pepsi. For those who think young. Show starts in two minutes. Best popcorn in town is Manley's High Pop. In regular or jumbo cartons, here's why. Take the tastiest, tenderest, scientifically grown popcorn, add pure, delicious seasoning and specially prepared salt. Then let the famous Manley machine work its magic on Manley popcorn, America's favorite popcorn. Crisp, savory, wonderful. Visit our concession stand now for Manley's High Pop. starts in one minute. of this theater thanks you for your patronage. And now, on with the show.
spacecraft was boosted. The Mariner B spacecraft was boosted into space by an Atlas missile with a Centaur second stage. At 6.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, January 10th, the capsule was successfully dropped on the surface of the planet Mars. The capsule discharged a robot device which succeeded in moving across the surface of the planet for a distance of 372 yards. This device collected soil samples and telemetered its findings to receiving stations on Earth. At 6.21 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, transmission ceased. Whether this was due to mechanical breakdown or conditions encountered on Mars hasn't been determined. That'll be all. Give it to public information. And Ms. Moore. Yes, sir. Try my call to California. Yes, sir. I thought you'd gone home. Pretty soon. Well, the reporters have been out there all night. They're going to want to talk to you. Well, that's all the authority wants to release right now. Until we've had a chance to analyze the findings. Well, the authorities better tell that to the papers. It's worth your life getting in and out of here. Of course, it isn't every day we make a successful landing on Mars. I wouldn't say it was so successful, Webb. No, you wouldn't. And you stop to think that the first time in the... I had your California call, Dr. Fielding. Say hello to Claire for me. I'll get us some coffee. Mrs. Fielding's on the line, Doctor. Dr. Fielding? Is anything wrong, Dave? What's the matter? Hmm? Oh. Dr. Fielding? Just tired, I guess. Dr. Fielding? You guess? Hello? Claire? Claire? This is Dave. Oh, just a minute, dear. I turned the radio on for the news and went to sleep. Was it all right? We made the landing. The robot transmitted for about six minutes before it went dead. That's good. I'm sorry I woke you up. It's quarter to five Beverly Hills time. Are you coming home? Just as soon as I can wind up my reports. Is it Daddy? Hold on. I thought I was being so quiet. You know how you sleep. It rang for hours. Well, as long as you're up, you better go get Rocky. He'd never forgive us. It's Judy. Well, put her on. She's gone to wake Rocky. They'll be on the other phone in a minute. You didn't tell her? No, not yet. I didn't think it was the right time. Dad? Give me that. I was up first. Now listen, you two in there, it's Judy's turn first. Hi, Dad. Did you get to Mars? Why, sure we did, honey. You know the fieldings. How's it feel to be a hero? Tired. But it's sure good to hear your voice. It's good to hear yours. Let me talk to him. Bye, Dad. Bye, honey. I knew you'd make it. I bet you they're all talking about you now. Even the president. Well, uh... I did have a little help. The Christmas tree's still up. They wanted to take it down, but I didn't let them. All your presents are under it. Oh, that's great, Rocky. You want to talk to Mother now? Sure, put her on. Dave? Is the tree really still up? Yes. Rocky wouldn't let us take it down. Oh, that's great. We can have a second Christmas. And a second New Year's? Sure, a second New Year's, too. When will all these festivities begin? Well, tomorrow, if I can get a plane out in the morning. David, I don't want you to come home just because we... Claire, I want to come home. Then you'll let me know? Sure, I'll let you know. Tell the kids. I will. Goodbye. Bye, dear. When's he coming home? Tomorrow, if he can get away. I'm going to go get dressed. You're going right back to bed. It isn't even five o'clock in the morning. Okay, but I won't go to sleep. 
Mom, I know how you feel. But don't spoil it when he comes home. She's got a right to be sore. It's been like this for quite some time, and she knows it isn't going to get any better. Yeah, it's like being an army wife. Either they get used to it or they go out of their minds. Claire's held up this long. She'll be all right. I'm not so sure, Webb. You know, Dave, Mars has been around for a few years. Why don't you take some of that leave you've been stacking up? A few days home would help. I'll think it over, Chaplain. Yeah, you do that. If you're going to get a plane out of here tomorrow, we've got something to do. Are you ready to uh, meet the press? You mean they're still out there? Oh, yes. They, they just want to know, is there life on Mars? Well, I sure got a good answer for that one. Oh, sure you have. Like, nobody knows. <laughs> Galloway's on vacation. I'll press the button. No, I'll get it. Where are we camping? In the small guest house up by the tennis courts. Aunt Francis left it furnished. take it down. I know. You told me. We'll be picking up needles for months. Well, I, uh, I'll put these away if you tell me where our room is. Your room is down at the end of the hall. I thought you'd be bringing a lot of work home with you. You really mean this, don't you, Claire? This isn't temporary. We had to have a place to stay when we sold our house. We sold our house because you were coming to Florida so we could all be together.
How together would that be, David? Claire, what do you want me to do? I don't have the kind of a job I can just quit. They consider me some sort of a natural resource for the time being. I know you can't quit your job. I wouldn't ask you to do that. But you're telling me I can't have both. I'm not trying to tell you anything right now, David. Oh, I didn't want this to happen when you first came home. Then why did you bring me here? You know how I feel about the Wainwrights? You won't even see a Wainwright unless you consider me one. We settled that a long time ago. Let's not go into it again. I know. I'm sorry, Claire. I'm sorry. Aunt Frances wanted somebody connected with the family to stay here on the estate while they tried to sell it. She asked me to do it as a favor. So you still aren't accepting anything from the Wainwrights. And uh, if it hadn't been for that, you would have come to Florida? I'll put my things away. I'll do it, Dave. Oh, it's all right, Peck.
Good to see you, too. We wanted to stay out of school, but Mom wouldn't let us. I'd like you to meet Frank. Frank Hazard, Daddy. Oh, yes, Frank Hazard. How are you, Frank? Very well, sir. I'm surprised you were able to get away, sir, after yesterday. Uh, you're not alone. Well, shall we go in? Come on. Rocky, that Christmas tree looks great. Swell, Dad. Hope you like your presents. I'll like it. You can bet on that. Hey, Dad, is there really life on Mars? Well, we don't know yet, Rocky. I thought you were going to find out. We tried, but the Martians wouldn't cooperate. Come on, let's open up your present. Oh, I think we should wait for your mother. She's up in the garden. She'll be right back. Here I am. Very proud to have met you, sir. Oh, same here, same here. Hope to see you again. Yes, sir. Shall I uh, pick you up at seven? Mm -hmm. What was that you said about the garden? Didn't you see me? I hollered. You looked right at me. Up in the French garden. David, I haven't been out of the house since you left. Come on, the tree's lighted. Judy, was that the same Frank I met last time? No, it wasn't. This is Frank Hazard. That was Frank Nicholas. Oh, Judy's boyfriend was named Frank. <laughs> He's really a very nice boy. And you two stop teasing Judy and you open your presents. He's a bacteriology major at USC. Oh, Come on, Dad. Fine. I wonder what this could be. A big box. A sleeping bag. Now you don't have any excuse not to take me to the Sierras. Well, we were just up there last year. It was four years ago, Daddy. Yeah, four years ago. Four. We used to go all the time. Looks like you're all ganging up on me. Go on, open the rest of your presents. To Daddy with love, Judy. Awfully thin. Could be a pressed duck. It is not a pressed duck. Open it. Hey, 5-2, the news. They said your name on the car radio. One more day to take advantage of these giveaway prices. And now, five minutes of news headlines before the hour for busy people in a busy world. In Sacramento today, the governor announced that he would submit the new state aid measure to the voters in the April primaries. The governor's bill was dramatically voted down yesterday in the legislature. No further word was heard today from Cape Canaveral regarding findings in yesterday's sensational Mars shot. The question asked by hundreds of newsmen, is there life on Mars, brought only a brisk no comment. Meanwhile, Dr. David Fielding, the man responsible for the first instrument landing on Mars, remained unavailable for interviews. Next, today's baseball score. Turn it off, will you, Rocky? In the National League, only They didn't two... even mention you'd left Florida. Does that mean you'll have to go right back? Oh, not necessarily. Schubert Sonata in B-flat major. The first new record I've had in a long time. Thanks, honey. Will you put it on for me? Which reminds me, if we're going to eat, I better put the roast up. You stay right there until I finish opening my packages. Now, let's see what you bought me. All right. But when you get hungry, remember, it was your idea. And that isn't a press duck. And it's not a sleeping bag, either. All right, I'll get it. Hi. Hi. I thought you got lost. Good evening, Mrs. Fielding. Evening, Frank. Are you sure you don't want me to help? No, thanks, dear. I'll just put the dishes in the dishwasher. But don't forget to leave the number where you'll be. Well, we'll be at Dr. White's home. Did you tell your father? You know, Daddy. With science, he thinks it's the greatest. 
I think he's taking a nap. The only sleep he's had was on the plane. There's a telephone number, Mrs. Fielding. We won't be late. Nice. Bye. What's this seminar about? Enzyme induction in E. coli. Oh. Made me jump. I didn't know you were there. The door to the big house is open. I thought you were in your room studying. I took a walk down to the gate. The door's wide open, but nobody's there. Are you sure? I know I locked it yesterday. I'll be glad when Mr. Galloway gets back Monday. I'll go down and lock it. You tell your father I'll be back in a minute. Did you hear me? I'll go with you. You stay here, dear, and get your studying done. I'll be right back. Monday. Well, then you better get to study. I've been studying. Ooh. Say, Dad, why don't we take a pack trip? Good idea. We'll talk about it tomorrow. That means never. I promise. But first, finish your study. Okay.
What's the matter, Claire? Tell me what happened. Someone followed me. Rocky told me the door of the big house was open. I went down to lock it. Somebody followed me back, then... You were standing there by the pool. But honey, I, I haven't been near the pool. But I saw you. What did you do? I ran. Why? I don't know. You were standing there. Suddenly, I was very bright. It's all right. You stay with me. Come on. Happy New Year. David, I, I've got to talk to him. Rocky? What? Like some ginger ale? Sure, just a minute. All right, see you on the tray. Okay. You should wait, dear. This is our New Year's toast. It ran over. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I wish Judy was here. Did you get your studying done? Not yet. Then you shouldn't have taken a walk. What walk? I've been in my bedroom ever since dinner. Oh, I thought you took a walk down to the gate. What would I do a dopey thing like that for? I don't know. I... Rocky, why don't you go back and do your studying tonight so we'll have the weekend free? Okay, Daddy. You heard him. And he wasn't lying. I know. What are we going to do? There's no one we can go to. They'd think we were out of our minds. Whatever it is, I have the feeling it's going to harm us. Claire, you have no way of knowing that. But you feel it too, don't you? I don't know why, Claire, but I... I feel that whatever it is has something to do with the work Webb and I have been doing. I'm going to call him because he's the only one who'd believe me. Saturday. I'd like you to come over, really, but I think it's better that you don't. What's getting into you? It's just that my folks will be talking about moving to Florida tomorrow, and if they decide to, I want to talk them into letting me stay here and go to USC. Why don't you let me help you? I can tell your dad all about USC. 
If you're going to be a science major... That's just it. If you're around here all day, they might get the idea that I'm not such a big disinterested scientist. Call me? Sure. Hey, you, Judy. Don't let Frank get away. I want to talk to him. I won't. Hi. Hi. Frank, I wonder if you'd do something for me tomorrow. Sure, Dr. Fielding. Will you come over in the morning and take Mrs. Fielding, Judy, and Rocky over to their Aunt Frances? What's the matter, Dad? Well, I've made arrangements for you to stay there for one or two nights, that's all. Well, I don't understand. Aren't you coming? Now, honey, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. Can you make it? Yes, sir. My pleasure. I'll be over in the morning. Thanks. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Night. Good night, Dr. Fielding. Good night, Frank. about all, Dr. Fielding. You're sure the boy wasn't drinking? You heard what my daughter said, and he looked quite all right to me. I know. It's just that he apparently wasn't speeding, and you say he knew the road. Doesn't seem any reason for a thing like this to happen. That's why they call them accidents. Never seems to be a reason. Still, we usually find one if we dig deep enough. Thank you, Doctor. I'm sure you want to get your daughter home. Are you well acquainted with the boy's family? As a matter of fact, I've never met them. Then we'll notify the parents. Thank you. Feel better now, dear.
gave her a pill. She'll sleep through now. It's like a house of mirrors. What did you say when she told you? What could I say? Just kept agreeing with it. That you and I, Rocky and Pal Judy. Except this one attacked her. <laughs> David, I'm glad you're home. Well, I'm not so sure I should be here. I'm sure. You know, you're not only rich, you're pretty. David, maybe we ought to call the police. They were here tonight. Why didn't you tell them then? I know. They wouldn't believe me. And it said I was overworked because of the project. You were upset because I'd been away so long as for Judy. And they had all the answers after the accident. I can't stand to think of the accident, that poor boy. Claire. Do you suppose... What, David? <sighs> Nothing. Say, uh... We better get some sleep. And then I'm going to pack you and the children over to your Aunt Frances. But Webb's coming in on the 10.30 plane. We'll have to meet him. Webb can take a cab. I'm not letting you out of my sight until he gets here. Big fella. Fine, Uncle Webb. Hello, Claire. <laughs> Good to see you. How much do we owe you? Oh, come on now. Dave, I'll take oh, care no, of it. No, no, Webb. We should have met you at the airport. Besides, you're not on an expense account. Real good to see you, Claire. Good of you to come. Where's Judy? I made her stay in bed today. Anything serious? Uh, if you'll excuse me. Oh, yes. Uh, here, that's all right. I'm supposed to sleep with this thing. They practically handcuffed it to my wrist. Well, this is nice. Are you going with us, Uncle Webb? Oh, well, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, son. Webb, would you excuse me? I still have a lot of things to do. Uh, Aunt Frances is expecting us at 12.30, and that means on the dot. Sure. All packed, Rocky? Almost. Uh, I'll have time to show Webb around a bit. Oh, I'm expecting a call at noon your time. We'll be back by then. Well, don't go too far, in case your call comes in early so you can hear me. We won't. Come on, Rocky. Where'd they get my phone number? You gave it to me, and I gave it to them. Canaveral? Oh, Washington. 
They want you back Monday. Washington? What do they want? Well, they don't confide in old Webb yet. But I think you better look over these reports. Iron oxide on Mars. Well, we knew this Friday before I left. Yeah. Here. You better read the back page. Now, this is a report on the last 15 seconds of transmission by the robot, just before it was scrambled and went out. Now, here you see the regular signal. And this is where the interruption starts. Now, notice the increase in power. It reaches a peak here, and then subsides here, just before the transmission stops. They're sure of this recurrent pattern? Well, that's what they think. The only thing they're really sure of is that when the signal should have been growing weaker, it became phenomenally strong and in a different form. Oh, I see. When they call, shall I tell them you'll be back on Monday? Oh, I don't know, Webb. I, I got to talk to Claire first. Well, at least you're talking. Sort of probation. <laughs> Children are getting bigger, and she's becoming worried whether she's going to spend the rest of her life as a space widow, and I can't blame her. Yeah, well, I guess it is a pretty common problem, all right. You know it is. May I want to show you something? Everything but a handball court. Well, they got one down by the kennel. Claire got a piece of this action? No, her father was one of old man Wainwright's in-laws. All she inherited was some money. <laughs> Don't knock it. Do not knock it. When she came out of the cabana, she said he was standing right there. Did you see him? We came back, but wasn't anyone here. She came from the far side and walked down toward the big house. Did you tell Claire? Not then. For a moment, I thought it was Claire. You see, when Claire had her experience, she didn't know what I'd seen from up here. And Judy, she didn't know about either of the experiences when she saw that girl in her room. What do you think? Well... All I know is what you tell me. If I didn't know you better, I'd think you were nuts. Sure you would. Anybody would. Oh, come on, Dave. Neither of us believe in the supernatural, but if you think this place is haunted, well, why don't we all just pack up and move out? Because I believe my eyes. And I think these apparitions are whatever they are have something to do with the kind of work you and I are doing. Now, look, Dave. I mean it. There's a definite connection about our work at the Cape and what's happening here. Do you remember last Thursday when you were in my office and that call came in from Claire? Do you remember I couldn't answer the phone? The girl had to remind me? Do you know why I didn't answer? I couldn't. I was a complete blank for a moment. I felt like I was empty, like a shell. Well, I'll buy that, but it doesn't prove anything. I had exactly that same feeling when I saw whatever it was I saw across the garden. Well, what about Claire? Well, she complained of feeling something, only she called it feeling faint. <sighs> well, even so, Dave, what, what can you do? Well, you haven't got a shred of evidence you can even take to the police, let alone those hard heads at the Cape. Well, they just say that you were having a breakdown because of overwork and that your wife was having a domestic yeah, trouble. Yeah, and Judy was upset because her boyfriend was killed. Right. I can't run away from it. it might be too important. Well, what do you plan on doing? The thing I saw went toward the big house. The other thing that followed Claire came from there. Now, as soon as Claire and the kids leave, I'm going down there. Because whatever it is, it's got to be in that house. Then you'll be over tonight? Sure, I'll call you. Promise? We'll be over. 
I can't stand his cooking. Well, there go the three smartest people in your family. If I didn't have to wait for this call, I'd talk you into going with them. While you're waiting, why don't I look the house over? When you get through, come on down. Well, if that's what you want. Well, what'll I tell them about coming back Monday? I don't know, Webb. Tell them I'll send them a wire. Huh? That'll go over like a lead balloon. All right, go on over to your haunted house. I'll be down as soon as I take the call. working, Mother. It must be working. Yes? Oh, Webb, it's you. There's something wrong with the gate. Would you please push the button up there? Okay. The gate still isn't moving. I'm pushing it. You, you want me to come down? No, thanks. We'll come back up. I'll have to call the maintenance man. going to be late. Isn't there another way out? Not with a car. Where's Dave? Oh, he, uh, he went down the main house. Alone? Well, I'm going to join him as soon as my call comes through. I wish you would, Webb. I don't like him down there by himself. If I'll call a maintenance man. No, it's like we're all prisoners. What is it? It's unearthly. Thank <laughs> you. 
offer you a drink, Dr. Billy. You're startled, I'm sure, but not completely surprised. What are you? I suppose you'd say an apparition. But I prefer a manifestation of intelligence. Whose intelligence? You have a theory on that, Doctor. You should have more confidence in yourself. I didn't want to believe it. I don't believe it. That doesn't alter the facts. There is life on Mars, Dr. Fielding. Oh, not as you know it here. Your organisms couldn't exist in our environment. Instead, we have intelligence in the abstract. Much like your electricity here. You can't weigh it or see it. But it can manifest itself just as you see me here manifested before you. Well, if this is true, uh, how did this intelligence reach Earth? You have a theory on that too, Doctor. That increase in the power of the signal from your robot just before we destroyed it. Your beam was transmitting our intelligence. An invasion? Oh, not at all. You invaded us. All we wish to do is protect ourselves. By attacking Earth? By stopping your attacks on us at the source. In this case, Doctor, your project. What? Good will that do? We're not the only country shooting from Mars. But you're the closest to success. The others will be taken care of when their time comes. How? Oh. They will be removed and replaced. Is that what you plan on doing with me? Removing and replacing me? Well, as you see, Doctor, you've already been replaced. Why my family? I could fool your co-workers, your friends, but not your children. And certainly not your wife. Should we go upstairs, I right? Since you came looking for me, I thought it only fair that you see everything. Why have you brought them here? You see, even you can't tell the difference. You can't harm me, Dr. Fielding. I don't believe you. You have the weapon. You may use it. Go ahead and use it, Dr. Fielding. It won't change anything. That was wise. We're not here out of vindictiveness. And why are you torturing us? Not torturing, observing. Even we can't imitate without first studying our subjects. When the time comes, we'll try to be what your people call you may.
What are you doing here? David, what's the matter? The front gate's jammed. Claire thought we ought to come down and get you. Dad, the gate's busted. Mom tried to call the maintenance man, but there's something wrong with the phone. You shouldn't have come down here alone, David. I was worried. <laughs> what's the matter with you? You look as though you'd seen it. Uh, what, what happened in there? Let's go back to the house. I'll tell you on the way up. It's almost impossible to think of intelligence existing without a brain. Yet, let's face it. The only organic brain we're familiar with couldn't exist on Mars. Extremes in temperature, lack of water and oxygen. Energy. It has to exist as energy. When it came down on the beam, there was an increase in power. That's what makes it so frightening. How do you fight a thing like that? How do you destroy it? You can't. Not by any means we know of. Then what can we do? We can get out of here right now. But that may be the answer. What other choice do we have? I, I mean to, to defeat it. Its source is on Mars. Therefore, it is cut off from its source. And if it's energy, I suppose the fundamental law applies. As energy, it can change its form, but it can neither be created or destroyed. Dave, wouldn't you settle for a change in form? I see what you mean. Make it work. Make it follow us. Try to break it up. Or dissipate it. Right. I think we ought to fly to the Cape and drop this whole problem right in their laps, whether they want to think we're crazy or not. If it isn't too late already, there may be a chance. Let's get going. But the gate's jammed. I can spring that lock with a pinch bar. Just get the children together. Webb, don't let him go down there alone. Don't you worry. Just get ready. You haven't even got your stuff together. No, Webb, I'll go down. But I'll go down. I'm very big with crowbars. You just throw some things in a suitcase. I'll be right back. All right. The keys are in the car. Don't take any chances. Don't you worry about me. You just be ready. <laughs>
All aboard. Off we go. Now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.